this is stressful. This is crazy that I'm doing this. We're doing great and we're gonna continue to do great. I'm really glad I did the challenge, but would I ever recommend someone do this? No, <laughs> I really wouldn't. And this is where the vlog begins to fall apart. <laughs> Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Leandra the TBR Zero. It is the second week of TBR Harvest in which I put all of the prompts from my October readathon onto a spinner and then figure out which ones I actually have to read every single week, hoping to eventually accomplish one of the three activity sheets. Last week I ended up doing four prompts. I read six books meaning that two of the books were extra and I will have to eventually assign them to prompts that I get. I think what I'm going to do is the next time I spin, just remove two prompts that fit those two books and call it a day. But the reason why I'm feeling a bit jittery and really excited about this introduction to the second week vlog is because I've decided to add an additional challenge. I know, what am I doing? I already have the spinner wheel, but you know what? It's even more fun the harder it gets, right? I think, I'm hoping, well, we're gonna find out. I have been inspired by two different booktubers actually for this additional challenge. The first one was Brittany Loves Reading. She is currently doing a vlog challenge and by the time this one's out, hers will have been published, so I'll make sure to have it linked below. But Brittany for the last week has been asking booktubers to basically choose a number between one and 400, and then whatever number she gets, she has to read that number of pages per day. And it seems like it's been a very wild ride because it could be 400 pages or someone could say, read six pages. And what you do is you literally only read the number of pages you're given. The other person who Brittany saw do this challenge was Rachel Catherine. She ended up asking a bunch of her booktube friends to try to figure out how many pages she had to read. It was a really fun vlog and I'll have that linked below too definitely go check both of them out because both of them had different results, different page numbers they had to read, and different reactions. They also highlighted different booktubers, which is what I'm also going to try to do. Part of that is obviously because it's more fun when people don't know what the challenge is, so it doesn't make sense for me to ask the same creators that Rachel and Brittany asked. But the other reason is because I still wanted this challenge to be associated with what TBR Harvest is all about, which is to promote reading from your shelves, reading for your TBR goals, but also encourage you to participate in other readathon and reading events. There are a bunch of reading challenges going on year long during a weekend in October, during the month of October. So I really wanted to make sure that I highlighted as many creators as I could and that's what I'm doing for this vlog. Many of you know, at least those of you who are participating in the Escape the Haunted House, that in order to escape the attic, to get your Scoobies to unite, you have to read a prompt from another reading event that's going on right now. And in the same vein, I thought it could be great to remind you of the various events that are going on. So my plan is to highlight seven different booktubers this week and make sure that you know what readathon or reading event they're hosting this month and also asking them to, in return, turn make me kind of go insane. And yes, I truly do mean going insane because while I'm doing a TBR harvest prompt, I also am going to be trying to combine that with Fablin, hosted by the word nerd Margaret, because I'm a host for her readathon. And if I can, I would really like to be able to participate in some way in the booktubers readathon that I'm doing. So either reading a book in honor of their readathon or that fits one of their own prompts. We'll see how that goes. You know, we're making some big goals here. I only have a week and yet I feel like I can conquer the world all of a sudden. The first booktuber who I'll be highlighting is Sarah from Wicked Reading. She has created a horror bingo that is meant to start in October, but it's actually a year long challenge, encouraging people to read more horror, explore the genre, and just embrace the fun and the spectrum that horror provides us. Cause there are a lot of subgenres, a lot of authors who are veterans, but also debut authors. There's a lot of diversity in 
and social commentary and horror. It's actually an amazing genre that I don't think we see enough people raving about and it's one that I'm getting more into with every passing year. So it is all thanks to Sarah that we have this gorgeous bingo board. I am hoping to check off a few things during the month of October but it will be a reading event that I'll be carrying throughout the rest of 2024 and most of 2025. I'm really hoping I get a blackout board. That would be amazing. But now it's time to find the answer to the question I posed to her. I reached out to Sarah. I asked her to kindly choose a number between zero and 400 and she responded with 222. I'm not gonna lie. I do really appreciate the beauty of three twos in a row and I'm wondering if there's some significance or she just decided to like choose a random generator. Here's the number she's giving me and not really think much of it. But that means I have to read 222 pages in one day and I also have a very busy day. I'm not gonna lie. So I am currently scrambling to do this intro before I go off and host a manor event. We're gonna be reading A Haunting in Venice. No, we're not. It's a movie. We're going to be watching A Haunting in Venice. It's an all manner watch party that we're hosting because the sleuths, we ended up reading Halloween Party by Agatha Christie in September. I thought it could be a really fun event to bring everyone into the fold. So we're going to be watching that. And then afterwards, I do have my live show discussion for Halloween Party itself. So I do have a chunk of the day where I'm quite busy. Before I start the watch party, I will make sure to spin to see what TBR Harvest prompt I have to do. And then hopefully I'll be able to reveal what book I actually start for Wicked Reading. Thanks so much Sarah for doing this. I'm really really excited and I hope I can do you justice by reading a horror book that is one that we're all going to be excited for. Okay sounds good. Let me get this started. actually ended up going ahead doing the watch party for a haunting in Venice and it was my first time ever watching that movie and it was pretty entertaining. I also my oven just beeped meaning that it's time for me to put pizza in the oven. Yum! I just thought I would treat myself and do that especially because I'm so hungry but I don't want to put any effort beyond preheating the oven so Anyways, that is going to be something I'm going to do after this update is finished and after I spin to see what I'm actually going to read for this first prompt for the first day in honor of Wicked Reading. I'm really, really hoping that I can make the prompt work for a horror book because obviously she is doing horror bingo. She's a big horror reader, of course. Of course, right? But I also need to figure out which prompts I'm taking these off of because in my first week, my first vlog for Tea Bear Harvest, these were two books that I carried over from September that I just needed to finish. And so they weren't for any of the prompts that I spun with my spinner wheel, meaning that before I spin for the next book for Wicked Reading and for reading 222 pages today, which it's now four o'clock and I still haven't done that. So we're we are gonna be a bit stressed. It's gonna be fun stressed, I think. I, I need to take two prompts off before I spin. I am going to go through here and remove Paranormal Read from The Corn Maze because this has paranormal activity in it. It's got ghosts along with like werewolves, vampires, and a preternatural, someone who doesn't even have a soul. Uh, now, what was I thinking about putting this one for? I don't remember. <laughs> what was I gonna cover this for? I've got my trick or treat prompts up. So maybe it was for a trick or treat one. Let's do it for the lantern for the TBR backlist because I have a lot of newer releases on my list and I'm worried that when TBR backlist, if it comes up, which is for a 2023 publication date or earlier, it doesn't really make sense. You also could take that prompt as like a book you purchased in 2023 or earlier. I'm just going by date because that's convenient for me. <laughs> Oh my gosh, 
this is perfect yes second floor staircase uh from the haunted house is a mood read oh my gosh you saw it. this literally isn't doctored i got that prompt and i am over the moon about it because i have been in the mood for the eyes are the best part by uh let me see where is that monica kim i couldn't remember the last name so i am really really excited i already have it like queued up on my kindle and i also have the audio so this works for me as far as reading 200 plus pages <laughs> starting at 4 p.m on a sunday night oh my gosh the relief and it's also going to work for horror bingo because, oh my gosh, I didn't even realize back in my TBR piles video, I literally said that if I did the attic prompt, so this one was more for the attic, I was going to do a readathon that was obviously not my own. I was gonna do Wicked Reading, Sarah's, and the book I chose was The Eyes Are the Best Part because one of her bingo board squares is a 2024 release. And this one came out, I think in like June, 2024. But it's really funny that I'm still doing that, but I'm just repurposing it for a different room and I'm getting to use it for the second floor staircase. So I think it's meant to be. I was meant to read this book on this day uh, with Wicked Reading, you know, hanging out, on my shoulder telling me to get to 222 books. 222 books. So cool, okay, that's what I'm gonna go do. Um, but first I'm gonna put pizza in the oven, so. provide a halfway point not in the book but in the number of pages I have to read today I just hit page 111 and I'm about to start chapter 24 the tension so far has mostly been within our main character G1's personal life her relationships both with family with friends with her schoolwork she's felt a lot of pressure ever since her father left their mother for another woman and her mother has also been quite emotionally unstable since that event. I'm at the point where it's been about three months since he left their family and Ji Won and her sister Ji Hyun are doing their best to try to cope with the new reality that they're living in. Ji Won is going through a lot of turmoil for herself too because while all of her friends are going to Berkeley, she's attending, I think, possibly a community college or another university that just doesn't have the same type of prestige, and she's currently on scholarship. Obviously, this suggests that our main character is 18, 19 years old, so this is really a new adult horror. I don't really know if horror has that age category or recognizes it compared to, say, fantasy or romance, but... I do feel it. I feel that this is new adult. There are times when I actually felt like I was wondering, wait, are we in high school? Is this main character, you know, 16, 17 years old? She's feeling the pressure to excel academically while also performing as a kind of mental and emotional shoulder for her sister, for her mother. Her mother's also started dating again, a white man who really isn't actually very respectful of Korean culture because our main characters are Korean American, by the way. And obviously Ji Won, Ji Hwan are still upset about the, the loss of their father, the physical loss of him being in their lives because he doesn't really get in touch with them very often. And they can see that this man, George, supposedly makes their mother happy. However, he also is one of those people who seems to fetishize Asian women, which of course makes everyone uncomfortable, except for the girl's mother who doesn't really seem to notice. And while all of this is happening, the, the horror of it all, the 
idea that is coming from the title are his blue eyes and G1 being obsessed with them. She is starting to fantasize about cutting them out. She's having these really vivid dreams that for everyone watching her are interpreting them as nightmares because she's thrashing, she's not sleeping well, and it seems to be driving her towards a point where she's eventually going to act on these urges. And that's really what I'm waiting for. I was assuming that from the get-go we are going to be having her cutting out eyes left right and center but this is definitely more of a tense novel with anticipation we're waiting for her to act we're wondering how far she's going to take these urges and so it's kind of just like a waiting game anyways okay i'm starting to ramble so let me get back to this book uh once i read another hundred pages I can officially close day one. I can check off Wicked Reading from my list of booktubers controlling my day. And yeah, we'll start everything over tomorrow. I have officially reached page 230. And because it starts at page 8, 222 pages later is 230. I don't know if you'll be able to, to if it'll like zoom in, but that's confirmation. I'm at 230. We have really reached a huge breaking point in our main character G1. She is feeling empowered but that empowerment is coming through some really horrific actions that she's taking. I am of two minds with how I feel about it. One, the descriptions are disgusting. Like oh my gosh her literally cutting out these eyes which you know it's not a spoiler it's literally in the title it is so visceral the discussions of like what the eyes feel like it has some really great social commentary on women's place in the family and society the expectations for them to be submissive to allow men to treat them like objects to treat them as though they are in the world to please men uh, especially the various prejudice, racism, and stereotypes surrounding Asian women specifically. I just, I feel for G1 while she's still doing horrific things. This closes our time with Sarah from Wicked Reading. Definitely check her out. She has some really great creative videos on her channel in addition to this year-long readathon that she has decided to host. I am so impressed. I have only ever ventured into the month-long events, so the fact that Sarah is so creative and willing to participate in something that would be helping others guide others throughout an entire year of a huge massive bingo board. I'm so impressed and I can't wait to continue to support her, to participate in horror bingo. I'm I'm close to getting my first square. I unfortunately she just didn't give me more pages. I'm a bit nervous because today obviously was a huge page count. Uh, I'll be interested to see what the pages all look like together. Uh, at the end of the week we'll have to see to see if there's a pattern or if everyone was just kind of randomly choosing pages willy-nilly. Uh, but tomorrow is my busier days. Mondays and Thursdays are quite busy because I work at both of my jobs. One of them is remote, so that's not too bad. But then the other one, I travel to the library and I am picking up a few extra hours because our director is off at a conference. So she needs assistance with opening. Anyways, okay, uh, a really great start, even though I'm a bit frustrated that I don't get to keep going and at least finish the chapter. Uh, but I think that's what makes the challenge really fun and kind of like gets you out of your comfort zone. So, okay, um, I will see you guys in the AM. Bye. All right, so it is the early afternoon of the second day for this challenge, and the booktuber who has controlled my page count on this beautiful Monday morning is Margaret the Word Nerd. She is hosting Fablin, a competitive readathon this October. There are three guilds, and all of them have the same goal to get out of the haunted library. I've had a lot of fun so far. There are five acts. We're currently in Act Two, and I actually do need to prioritize this readathon because I've only done the first of three encounters within this current act, and we have until I think the 12th to get it done. So I have two books. I need to read at least before I can move on to act three. So time is of the essence. I ended up reaching out to Margaret asking her, hey, would you mind providing me with a page count? You know, or I didn't tell her page count. I just said number zero through 400 because I'm being sneaky. And she gave me 106, meaning that I have to read 106 pages today, which is 
doable, I think. I'm a little bit nervous because this morning I didn't have time to read. I was uh, focusing on She Done It, the podcast I work for, and then obviously I have hours at the library starting now until 8 p.m. tonight. Usually if it's really slow, I am able to either read at the desk or listen to an audiobook as I'm shelving and shelf reading throughout the stacks. So I'm, I'm really hoping that I find moments of reprieve because if not, it's going to be really tough. It won't be tough, but it'll just be tiring to start my reading at 8 p.m. or after 8 p.m. tonight. My goal is to actually prioritize uh, the eyes are the best part because I have relatively 50-ish pages left. I'll have to double check. But we ended at 2.30 last night and I, I don't know, I think on Goodreads it said like 278. So I, I could get a good like 40-ish something pages from that. And then my goal is to actually start a book for another encounter within Fablin, which is going to be... I got distracted. I saw a patron and I was like, why are they here so early? Anyways, I'm going to read Blameless by Gail Carriger. This is perfect because it will count for one of the encounters for the main stacks prompt, I believe, because there are shadows. I looked and they're, they're very tiny, but there are like casting shadows. And I just, I really want to read a book for the prompt of casting shadows. There's two others that you could do. And I just, I really, really want to do the shadow one because it seems like there's more to it. I'm intrigued by what could happen if I read the book following the shadow. So I'm going to do that. And hopefully I'll be able to like slowly read it throughout the week. And yeah, just like piggyback off of other people's page counts. This is stressful. This is crazy that I'm doing this, but it's fine. Okay, I actually need to go to work and get the library ready for opening. So I'll check in when I can. pages for the day two days in a row allowing booktubers to control my page count and I'm feeling pretty good I will say we still have most of the week to go so I might not be feeling this way in a couple days time but you know what I'm gonna continue to live on the high and say that yes we're doing great and we're gonna continue to do great that's right. You heard it here first. So I ended up reading 106 pages today. I read 50 pages, the last 50 pages, which was a really nice round number. It was very satisfying. And The Eyes Are the Best Part by Monica Kim was also satisfying. I really enjoyed the book. I do still feel as though the dialogue at times was a bit forced as if the characters were performing and overdoing their lines. They were filling certain extreme archetypes, but it does make sense with the social commentary the author was pushing through this narrative. I understand why she made the choices she made and the ending was still satisfying. I was still very happy with how it ended. I just felt as though we were on a chessboard that was pre-made and it didn't feel as organic or as fluid with the types of characters we were dealing with. And I specifically mean the two men in Ji-won's life who have been harassing her, making her life really struggle, and with the gorgeous blue eyes that she wants to eat. With that said, I would still definitely read from Monica Kim again. I can't wait to see what kind of narratives she ends up publishing later in her career because this was really enjoyable. It was really thought provoking and I think it's important. You know, not all horror has to be important, but when it is, when it's something that you would recommend to people for them to feel as though they've really went through an experience with a character and understand, or at least attempt to understand the feelings that these characters have gone through, it just, yeah, it was really interesting. I'm so glad that I read it. And then we get to the 56 pages I had to end the night with. I had to pick up another book and as I said I was going to read Blameless. I did start it. Yes I am in the middle of a chapter. Actually I'm in the middle of a question. A character poses a question to the rest of the group and then we stopped. 
that's it. I guess we're just going to assume their answers until tomorrow when I get to pick it up again. I just think that's so funny that with this challenge, you literally do have to stop in the middle of a chapter in the middle of a conversation. This has happened to me two days in a row. I assume it's just going to continue to happen. All you have to do, and it was in the middle of a section. So right down here, all I have to do is look up and keep reading. But I was like, nope, I'm not going to. I'm going to play fair. I am continuing to enjoy the series. It's the third one. So we're really invested in the characters at this point. And we picked up right where we left off in book two with the drama that is unfolding with Alexia McCann and her husband. I'm not going to say anything else, but there's also some serious questions going on as far as like the supernatural world. It never seems to cease to have a problem in which Alexia, our preternatural, has to be in the middle of to solve to protect her friends and just bring peace back to Victorian England. I am just so excited to get back to it. I'm really really hoping almost for a big number for tomorrow so I can just devour it. With that said, we're gonna see depending on who answers me because I think I told you guys but I'm posing questions to a few people at a time just so I have a number to you know deal with in the morning when I wake up and uh, I'm not really sure who's gonna answer me but I'm really hoping for this one specific person to have an answer for me so that I can uh, continue reading Blameless. We'll see. So I'm going to end this here. I have to return to Brooklyn Sprints soon, actually. I don't even think I mentioned that. I'm on TBR Harvest Sprints with Brooklyn from Brooklyn Reads. She is an Australian booktuber who is lovely. At this point, I'm just doing admin stuff because I can't continue reading. So uh, I guess that is a silver lining. It's forcing me to do certain tasks that I've been avoiding all day. And then I will probably go to bed after this sprint wraps up because, you know, we need sleep. Good morning. It's another day, meaning another booktuber gets to decide how many pages I am reading today. This time, I have Katie from Books and Things to thank for my page count. Katie is hosting Victober throughout the entire month. She's encouraging people to read books in the Victorian era during Queen Victoria's reign. There are a handful of prompts thanks to her and her co-hosts, but one that's really special and one that I'm participating in today during my Tuesday reading sprints is going to be in honor of Jennifer Brooks and Alice and the Giant Bookshelf. These two booktubers unfortunately passed away and to honor their memory, to honor their contribution to the booktube community, Katie and her co-hosts have decided to have the group challenge be to read a book or books by Wilkie Collins and or Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. I have Sir Arthur Conan Doyle in my hands, so I will be reading The Hound of the Baskervilles. I ended up actually starting this back in September and I only got about halfway before life took me away from the novel. So I'm really excited that I have a perfect reason to get back to it today. And I only have about 100 pages left. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read this, finish it, and then probably for the last like 70 ish pages go back to blameless which is kind of also in honor of October it's not really but uh, it is set during the Victorian era just an alternate universe in which you know the supernatural walk among us I do really love the symmetry of that the fact that I'm reading a classic one that is reread by so many people every single year and I'm reading it for the first time while also reading a modern novel set during the Victorian era just to show that even though we aren't in the Victorian era anymore, we are still publishing books set there because of how rich that time period was. Wait, did I even mention how many pages Katie gave me? Sorry about that. She gave me 172, uh, which is almost right in that middle spot. Not as many as Sarah, but more than Margaret. And actually it's a perfect day for that because Tuesday's my day off. So I do have a lot of reading plans. Not only am I hosting sprints for myself, but I will be on with Maddie from This Bookish Cottage. She invited me to join her. She tends to host Tuesday evening sprints and I'm very excited because she told me to make sure that I have dice handy. Other than sprinting quite a bit on my channel and others, I also am probably going to have to do some editing for my Thursday video that obviously comes out in two days, but the Manor guests get it tomorrow. I am also trying to solidify my Goodreads Choice Awards predictions for the mystery thriller category. I've never actually done that before, so it's a bit daunting, but I'm excited and I think it's going to be my Sunday video. So that means I'm probably going to be recording the next couple days too. I'll let you guys know how that goes.
have about 45 minutes left in my final sprint for the day before I send everyone over to Julie, keep calm with books and coffee, because she's hosting Fablin Sprints tonight and we've had a really good group. It's always so nice on Tuesdays to just hang out with the community and see who shows up because so many people do. We all are productive. It's just, it's been a great chat, especially because obviously it's TBR Harvest themed. So we're getting a few new faces too. It's, it's just a good time. But anyways, I have officially finished The Hound of the Baskervilles, so I thought this could be a good time to give you an update, especially because the sun will be setting soon, and I like to record during the daytime when I can. So I ended up starting at page 89 today, and it, this one, my edition has 191 pages, so I read 103 technically. So that means that I can subtract that from 172, and I have about 69, 70 pages left. I'll do the actual math, but it's something along those lines. And my intention was to just continue and read those pages for Blameless, but I remembered that I was supposed to be spinning my spinner wheel. I completely dropped the ball. I think I was just so excited to actually have a book that would be deemed Victorian in honor of Katie for her Victober readathon. Meanwhile, I also discovered that this isn't really fitting Victober because I think she was saying that in the era that they're kind of going for, the time period, it's during Queen Victoria's reign and her reign ended in early 1901. This was serialized in 1901 and actually was published in 1902. So it just doesn't fit and I was so upset when I found out it's fine we're still counting it I mean Arthur Conan Doyle is known for his Victorian detective fiction I'm just kind of sad that it also isn't technically within the time period that we set but it's fine but now we have the dilemma of blameless because I started this not even realizing not even thinking about the fact that I should have a TBR harvest prompt attached to it right now I'm doing it for Fablin which is also totally fine but I think what I might have to do is go spin the wheel, see what prompt we land on, and if it fits for Blameless, perfect. It was meant to be. If it doesn't, I might pick up another book because I do really want to make sure that I'm getting as many TBR Harvest prompts as possible and the spinner is just a really fun challenge. So yeah, we'll see what happens. If I don't land on something that this can help, then I might pick up something else for the time being because I also have another prompt I have to do for Fablin. This is one of them. And actually, never mind, I lied. But this one's gonna fit for the shadow prompt, but I still have to fit one that either has wings on the cover or has up, down, right, left in the title. That's the third encounter within Act Two that I have to accomplish by the 12th anyway. So we'll just do some kind of like juggling. I might have to read two books at one time. So let me go spin, see if I get to read this tonight or if I have to switch to a different book. I really hope I can just read this, but we'll see what happens. day four of this challenge Wednesday and the next booktuber to decide my fate is Kelsey from Slime and Slashers but before I get into her and her amazing readathon that is Halloweenathon I have to provide an update so I had to read 172 pages I read 103 when I was finishing up The Hound of the Baskervilles and then that's when I had the dilemma of realizing I completely forgot I was also using the spinner wheel for TBR harvest events and so I did go back and do that. I ended up spinning twice. Uh, one to see what my next book would be to honor TBR Harvest, especially because I was like, I'm hoping it fits for Blameless. If it doesn't, we're going to have to spin again and hope that that book fits for Blameless because I still want this to fit for Fablin. It's just, it's a lot. It's hard when you're juggling like three different readathons in one day, but we do it because we love books and we love booktubers who are creative. So I ended up spinning and the first spin was the worst scenario. I literally can't think of a worse prompt for me to land on. 
and that was the VHS tape. The reread! Obviously that doesn't count for Blameless because I haven't read it. It's a new book to me, even though I'm continuing a series. And so I decided, you know what, we can make this work because I still need to read another book for Fablin for one of the two prompts I haven't done for Act 2. Blameless is going to count for shadow on the cover, something casting a shadow, but then I still have to fulfill a book that either has a direction word in the title or has wings. And you know who I have to thank for giving me this inspiration is Crystal from Bomb Book Reviews. Yes, one of my enemies who's also a co-host in Fablin. The book that Crystal ended up reading was Bright Storm by Vashti Hardy. This is the first book in a middle grade adventure series that I hold very near and dear to my heart. It's one of my co-host favorites because I think that it blends really well with Margaret's vision in Fablin for it to be like this D&D-esque adventure, this campaign, and I would argue the twins, the main characters in this book, do go on a campaign. They go on an adventure to find their father, and they engage with new environments, new people, new creatures, and it's just really fun while also being really heartfelt. So when Crystal read this, she reached out to me saying, Leandra, thank you so much. I had so much fun. So I did decide to choose this for the VHS tape because I read it a year or two ago. I think it was probably two years ago and I've been itching to return to this especially because I loved books one and two in the series and you can see that it has wings on the cover which is what I'm assuming Crystal did read it for. I think she read it for wings on the cover herself. So yeah thanks Crystal for reminding me to read this. With that settled I ended up having to spin again in hopes that that next book will count for blameless because if not what am I doing? What's the point of me reading this book? And it did. Weirdly enough, I wouldn't have known this if I hadn't already started the book. So is it a bit cheating? I don't know, maybe. But Blameless has a cat in the book and that's the prompt I landed on cat in the book. So I'm very excited that I can kind of continue on my way through the rest of the week, hopefully getting the page numbers that will accommodate for this so I can read Bright Storm, get that for my VHS tape, but also count it for Fablin, and then do Blameless, get it for my cat in a book, and also for Fablin. So we're, we're working with a lot of parts, but I think it's coming out to be a picture that kind of makes sense. Keeping that all in mind, I still had to read 69 pages last night, and I ended up reading 69 pages in Brightstorm while on sprints with Maddie from This Bookish Cottage. She invited me, and it was so much fun. It'd been a long time since we had been on screen together, so it was great to catch up to pass along book recommendations, past reads that we wanted to talk about, and we weren't alone on screen. There were two other booktubers, Sam and Jules, who I'd never met before, so it was really great to get to know them. It just felt in the spirit of TBR Harvest, this idea of shouting out other people, collaborating, participating in as many readathons as possible, and yeah, meeting new friends. It was a lovely way to end my Tuesday night, and now here we are. Okay, you're caught up. Wednesday, let's talk about Kelsey from Slime and Slashers. Kelsey is a ball of energy that I can definitely get behind. She is so fun, she's so energetic, and her entire channel is about nostalgic film, horror books, and everything else in between. I'm really excited to be able to participate in Halloweenathon through this venture of shouting out her channel, shouting out her readathon, because there's so many ways you can participate. Kind of similar to T-Bear Harvest, but totally different because it's unique and it's its own type of fun, spooky activities. She's got a bingo board, she's got a game board, she also has a bunch of reading sprints planned throughout the month. And interestingly, this started early. It started on the 22nd of September, but that doesn't mean you can't join late. I'm joining late technically because this is going to be my first time actually participating in any of the activities and that's where I'm going to have to potentially get a little creative in how I do this. She ended up giving me 113 pages which we did bond over. I was like oh I love the fact that you gave me the number 13. Yes there's a 100 tagged on there but 13 is my favorite number so this worked out. It was good juju, good karma. It was a good omen. That's what it was. It was a good omen. And so now I have to read 113 pages. The only caveat to that is that I'm like, okay, I can't finish either of these books, but what I can do is maybe dedicate myself to one or the other just to get a little bit further. Both of them ended with a question that needs answering, which I just think is hilarious that that is the only thing that I can take away from this challenge is it's happened to me three times. Why do we keep asking questions in books and why is it always at the end of a page so that you can't flip it and find the answer if you're trying to read to a certain page count? I know that the publisher isn't thinking I'm doing this or the author, but 
I feel like there's a conspiracy going on. Looking at the two of them, I'm not far in either book, so it doesn't really matter which one I pick up. I think I'm more apt to pick up Blameless, mainly because this one's a reread. I already know what's gonna happen with Brightstorm, even though I'm very comfy cozy, enjoying the fact that I'm back with these characters. I, I feel like I'm itching to find out what's going on with Blameless. It's also a thicker book, so I'm not as far proportionally as I am in Bright Storm technically. So that's probably what I'm going to focus on today. I'm going to read 113 pages. And the reason why I think I'm going to be a bit unique and kind of fun with how I participate in Kelsey's is because hers isn't just about reading books. It's also about participating in watching films or doing other kind of activities like that, like eating something very spooky and fun. So I might look through the list of all the different prompts, all the different activities, and just pick and choose a few that I can highlight today that would be really fun. And just honestly, I'm going to be able to thank Kelsey by the end for helping me get even more into the spooky mood, especially because neither book I'm reading right now for the vlog is spooky, really. It's technically an adventure story, and yes, there's a missing person, but it, it's not in that same kind of vein of suspense, thriller, horror, mystery in that same way. Blameless has a mystery and it does have supernatural characters, but it's also a bit more drama, a bit more kind of romance and all of these other things going on. Uh, there is a mystery though in every book so far, so I guess this is also closer to spooky season than this one is. I am rambling, or as our British counterparts say, I'm waffling. So we're just gonna see how this day goes, okay friends? I don't have a plan, but I think that that matches the energy that Kelsey gives off. So it's gonna be some fun chaos on this Wednesday. Hello everyone, this is your barista Leandra and I'm going to be making a decaf espresso martini with coffee. You need your simple syrup, you also need your coffee liqueur. I typically like Mr. Black but Borghetti's fine. I also am using Jamaican rum, typically I would actually use cognac. I think the original recipe is vodka but that just is not my style. And then I'm using decaf coffee. You can certainly use espresso, that's usually what you're meant to do. I'm including all of the ingredients, I usually use a little bit more syrup than I probably should. That's my choice. And uh, usually I make it myself. I'll make demerara sugar, um, but didn't have time tonight, so it's fine. And then I am adding two ounces of coffee liqueur. That's my preference. You don't have to do my recipe. And then I'll be doing one ounce of my choice of liquor. Some recipes say two ounces. Again, not my style. <laughs> I am totally fine. And what I'm doing is, is I'm including ice in my shaker. The problem is, is I didn't have large enough ice. Typically I like to use like much larger ice. I think I'm grabbing, yep, that's usually the size I like, but I went with what I had. You put everything together and then I shake it for 10 seconds. You don't see me do it because, well, I wasn't gonna make you guys watch me while I'm shaking this, but it gets nice and foamy. That's perfect because you want like a foamy head on the top of your glass when you pour it. So now I'm putting on my strainer on top of my, you know, mixed drinkage. <laughs> and then I'll just, you know, very calmly pour it over into my glass and you can see I have a coupe that's the type of glass you are meant to have it in and as you can see it's already starting to foam it's looking lovely uh, and I'm really proud of how it turned out to be honest like that is perfect the only thing I don't have is the garnish which is usually an espresso bean like a couple espresso beans look at that from that angle mm, yum I don't do this very often but when I do make myself you know a cocktail this is usually what I do and oh look at that I'm taking a sip what do I think? Yeah, it's delicious. And now back to reading it is. It is Thursday, meaning that we only have three more days to get through for this challenge. And I will tell you, I am definitely starting to feel the fatigue, but we're gonna keep pushing. We can do this. And you know what? I haven't failed yet yet. We'll see if that continues. To give you a bit of an update, yesterday I ended up celebrating Slime and Slasher's readathon, which is Halloweenathon, by continuing with Blameless. This ended up working out because one of the prompts among many for her readathon is Universal Monsters, which includes like werewolves, vampires, ghosts, and you know what? This has all of them. I was so happy that I was able to return to this and I did end up having to read 113 pages. I was at page, I think 59, 
or 56. Yeah, that's how math works. I was at page 56 due to another day's reading that made me stop there. So I was like, okay, let's read 113 pages. That's 169. I ended up reading 169 and you'll see it literally stops mid-sentence. I don't know how this sentence ends because I am sticking to the challenge and it felt very weird. It felt like I was violating some type of reader code, but we have to do it. And oh, it's making me cringe already, but it's fine because I have more than enough pages to read today to make up for it. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. The other thing that I did in celebration of Halloweenathon was actually the bring your own booze. And that prompt is linked to a book or cover that matches your favorite drink. It can be an alcoholic drink. It doesn't have to be. I ended up deciding to do that with the espresso martini and I made one as you saw. And the reason why I decided to make it and I thought it was appropriate for Blameless to be reading it is because Blameless does take place in Italy. Espresso martinis have espresso. Italy is known for espresso and coffee and just, oh my gosh, giving the world the caffeine that we deserve. So I thought it was really fitting. So that's what I ended up doing last night, cozied up. It was really lovely. And now we're here ready to do it all over again. But this time, the booktuber that I'll be highlighting is Jess, this Kiwi. You've heard me probably mention her a few times, for instance, in the announcement video and probably on sprints because she's hosting Scarathon, a bingo board that I think is really inclusive. It's fun. It challenges people. It has reading prompts, but there are also prompts for interacting with social media or doing things outdoors, seasonal activities, eating seasonal food. So I think it actually works out really well for everyone who wants to get into the mood, wants to have fun with spooky vibes without only doing reading because sometimes we need a break from the reading. Plus, it's Jess's birthday month. So go hang out, wish her happy birthday, subscribe to her. She is a lovely New Zealander and I highly recommend that you check her out. And that's where my praises stop because Jess, how dare you? You ended up giving me 300. When I asked you to choose a number between 0 and 400, is it my fault? Because I did make the range up to 400. Yes. But would I prefer to blame someone else? Also, yes. But I also have to thank you because giving me that big number today means that I have a good reason to finish at least one of these books, which I desperately need to do because the month... Oh my gosh, I just short-circuited. The week is almost up, meaning that we are going to be quickly moving on to Act 3 for Fablin. Plus, I just, I haven't spun the wheel in quite some time, so we need to keep moving. For the 300 pages, I am likely going to split it up between these two books, and actually both of them will fit for her Scarathon bingo board. I double-checked looking through the books I've already read for the month of October, and you can see I've got some options. I am close to hitting bingo in a few places, but the two squares that I think these two books can focus on are actually ones that I desperately need at the moment. One of them is energy, and the other one is a break. So for energy, this is a book that can get you out of a reading slump that you think would be a really good choice for that. And I'm going to choose Brightstorm just because it's a reread, and I know that that is a very common recommendation for people to do when they're in a reading slump, return to authors you love, return to books you love, reread them, and just get all cozy with the characters once again. And then I also need a break. So that middle square right in the middle of the board, which would typically be your free space, but Jess isn't going to make it that easy for you. Instead, she's gonna say, okay, get that easy space with an easy read for your break. And Blameless is definitely gonna be that. So we will see. I'm pretty sure I can only finish one book or the other, but at least I'll be able to finish one and then just add my remaining pages to the other book. So yeah, I'm I'm not sure how I'm going to divvy this up yet. You and I are going to find out as the vlog progresses. So woohoo! Thanks, Jess! Where the vlog begins to fall apart. 
It is Friday. I never updated you on how Thursday went with my 300 pages, thanks to Jess, this Kiwi, and her scare -thon. Well, I ended up finishing Blameless. I had 210 pages to go. I started at 169. The book ends at 379 and I didn't read anything else. So 300 minus 210, meaning that I'm currently at a 90 page deficit for Friday. And I have another booktuber to highlight and I also have to reveal how many pages she has chosen for me. And the booktuber I'm highlighting is Brie Locked Booktition because she is currently hosting Black Oween. It is a spooky readathon highlighting all authors who write crime, suspense, horror, mystery, anything really spooky, paranormal stuff. And she has this really lovely map, the Tulis Parish. I just think it's gorgeous and there are various prompts going on. I still have have to figure out what prompt the book is that I want to read because I've, I've already chosen it. I really really want to read uh, Ruin Road by Lamar Giles. This is a YA horror that just looks awesome. I've been a bit afraid to read his other YA horror, The Getaway, just because the title is just haunting in such a way that I'm like, I don't know if I'm ready. And I'm someone who reads adult horror. I've read, obviously, The Eyes Are the Best Part. Like, I, I've read things that are horrific this year. But for some reason, this one really spooks me out. But Ruin Road, I'm hoping it's going to give me what Murder Road didn't when I DNF'd that book by Simone St. James earlier this year. And in order to read this, I have to obviously read the number of pages that Brie kindly gave me. And she was so sweet. Oh my gosh, I was really nervous asking her because she's someone that I've admired for quite some time. And of course, she responded with such kind words. She was lovely. She was totally up for the challenge, not knowing what the number was that she was giving me. And the number she gave me was 333. Yep, she gave me the highest number yet this week. And she was so apologetic. I thought it was so funny. I was like, oh, I can't wait to tell her what it's for. And immediately she sent me a voice message saying, do you want me to change my number? I will change it. Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm making you read 333 pages? Shit. Oh, I'm so sorry. Do you want me to choose again? I can choose again. And I told her, absolutely not, don't worry. I have a perfect book for it. And I was actually a bit nervous because the book I wanted to read was 350-ish pages. So I was like, am I gonna be able to read this in one day? Or is she gonna force me to stop? And I was like, oh gosh, 333. I literally am gonna have to read this book and wait 20 pages to actually finish it. But maybe it's a blessing in disguise that I have a page number deficit from yesterday for Jess. So 333 plus 90. I have to read 423 pages today if I don't want to tag more pages onto tomorrow, the final booktuber. And I don't know what number of pages I'm going to get that day. So we'd rather be safe than sorry and make sure we get the 423 today. Did I mention that it is almost three o'clock and I'm hosting sprints in less than a half an hour and I haven't read anything today? Um, no, I don't think I did, but now you know. So the stress is real, it's gonna be fine, but what I'm gonna do is first, I'm gonna re-watch Bree's amazing announcement video because there's just a lot of great information in there about the Discord, about the merch, and all of the different changes to Black Oween this year compared to past years. And I don't think I've mentioned this, Maybe I have, I hope I have, but every single booktuber I highlight, the announcement videos will be linked below. So check them out, subscribe to them, and see if you want to tag on a couple more readathons uh, throughout the month of October. But yes, so I'm really excited to read this. And please, Brie, don't worry. We're going to get through it. This is a great excuse for me to read one book in one sitting, which I've already done, I think. I did that last week for my week one. So maybe that's the trend. Every single week, one book I read every single week is going to be in one sitting and it's going to be Murder Row today. I really hope it's great because there have been so many positive support from other authors. Uh, Tiffany D. Jackson, Aaron E. Adams, Tana Reeve Dew. That's just the three I've read from the one side. I hadn't even gone into the year. So I'm, I'm really excited about it. And um, yeah, I, I got to stop talking and start reading. So I'm going to go do that. Okay, in my stress, I ended up completely like not acknowledging that by reading Blameless, I ended up getting my a break square. So I got right in the middle. It was great. And then I also um, ended up getting my shadow, casting a shadow. So we're making progress with Fablin, made progress with Scarathon. And what was I gonna have it count for? Oh, Cat in the Book. 
Nice. So uh, I got that off for TBR Harvest as well. Oh my gosh. Okay, now it's time for me to relax. I'm really excited because tomorrow is Kirsten from The Reading Nymph, her relax and readathon. And I, I think that's what I need. I need a day to relax. So anyways, getting ready for sprints. They're starting in a few minutes. Just wanted to acknowledge that I, I had that. And also the reason why I haven't been reading all day is because I've been preparing and I did my very exciting uh, top 20 predictions for the mystery thriller category for Goodreads. Um, yeah, anyways. Okay, I think, I think I've updated you. We're good. o'clock. I went on sprints, had a great crowd. It's always really lovely to take the time to sprint. Uh, it really does take a lot out of my social battery, but it ends up being worth it because we have so many great discussions about books, about reading, um, about the booktube community and what everyone has going on. I also had the ability to obviously promote Fablin while also promoting TBR Harvest, uh, having, you know, a mixture of people talking about the various encounters they had to deal with in the haunted library, while others were mentioning how pesky those black cats were and trying to catch them in the corn maze. Uh, and I had Danny, Neva and Julie on with me too so it was a great mix of hosts across the readathons too uh, plus I was able to get 196 pages read so that means I'm about 120 something pages shy of being able to catch up before going into the final day of this challenge. Oh my gosh. And like I said, uh, Brie was so sweet and saying, you know what, I really could choose again. Like, <laughs> we don't have to be crazy. But you know what, I decided to uh, just push through and it gives me a great excuse to finally read this book because I've been eyeing it and no, I, I didn't mean for that to be a pun, but I guess it is. And I'm finding it really thoughtful and it's pretty interesting uh, the themes of horror being like making a deal with the devil and the fact that it's set in a modern time period there's another like timeline will periodically be going to then and we're following a different character I'm not going to get into it because I feel like it could be spoiler territory but our main character he is being forced to see his family his friends and other members of the community do things that would typically scare them and because they're not afraid they aren't as protected like fear protects us in a certain way i think that's what lamar giles is really like looking into the various reasons why we experience fear and what people truly are afraid of like being physically hurt of course uh, but there's also the fear of uh being outcasted for horrible views so while there is that clear, you know, question of like being afraid of confrontation and, and being afraid of like maybe standing on your roof, for instance, and falling off, there's also these people who are suddenly fearless and saying their true beliefs, being racist, and uh, very like blatantly racist, and not having any kind of worry that people would backlash against them. And unfortunately, we aren't really seeing much backlash when people are saying heinous things to our main character, Cade, or to other people online. And I, I really appreciate that Lamar Giles is saying this because in the last few years, uh, it certainly has been a turbulent time in person, in social occasions, as well as online. And for certain reasons, people aren't being as afraid to show their true colors racism, homophobia, transphobia, and the like. I'm glad this is a YA horror because that means that we have adults reading it, but also people who are, you know, 13 to 17 and they'll definitely gravitate towards this topic. I already, I'm only about halfway through, but I plan on like promoting it at the library, putting it on the staff shelf because I'm, I'm really liking it. And it's making me want to go back and read The Getaway even more uh, because it, yeah, it's just, it's making you think about a lot of things. But what prompts have I decided that this is going to fit for Black Queen in honor of Bree's readathon? Well, she said in her announcement video that you could double up across two different locations on the map. So I've decided to do that. I think it's gonna count for a prompt in Joe's library as well as a prompt in St. Treme's graveyard. So for St. Treme's graveyard, one of the prompts, and I think it's one of the harder ones, is 
a book involving like making a deal and this definitely does like it's making a deal as well as like being careful what you wish for uh there is a character in here who does like pretty much make a deal with the devil like in certain ways so I think it counts for that one and then for Joe's library this is written by a black man and that's one of the prompts for that one so I'm, I'm really happy that I was able to participate in her readathon to the fullest and I'm gonna have to go back and like see what other books I've read this month and like play a little bit of catch up because I feel like I've been hanging out on the map quite a bit there's been quite a few books that I've read that kind of fit a few prompts in different ways um but yes anyways uh I still have to figure out what I'm gonna do because I don't know why I think I'm getting distracted in a good way by all the other readathons that I'm kind of like hopping into each day and trying to highlight their prompts have fun with it that I'm forgetting that I'm spinning a wheel like I, this is the second time I've forgotten to spin a wheel so for this one I'm so far into it and I'm gonna be finishing it tonight I think I might just have to take a prompt off the wheel to fit this one and I know I have a few that would but Anyways, I just wanted to address that, that like at this point the wheel exists, but I think it's just more important to be able to participate in these really creative readathons to the fullest. So I'm forgiving myself. I hope you're forgiving me. Um, but yeah, so my plan is to finish this and then I will probably have, let me see here, maybe like 60, 70 pages to read after this is finished. I'm going to have to do some calculations because at this point I can't really do math. <laughs> I think I'm just mathed out. There are so many numbers being thrown at me and I've read so many pages this week already that my, my brain is a bit fried. So uh, thank you for that, my friends on booktube who I've asked to do this. Um, yeah, thanks so much. Also, I'm a little bit in pain, but it's fine. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll let you guys know what I get up to. But when I hit 423 pages, the 333 for today for Brie, and then the 90 I'm playing catch up for Jess, then I will be able to end my night calmly, peacefully, get a good night's sleep, and then we'll find out what's in store for my final day. But um, yeah, so my goal is to give you one more update today. I, I hope that that happens. If not, it's going to be tomorrow morning. I finished Ruin Road and this was so good. The ending though, I have some thoughts, some worries, some questions. Uh, certain people's fates are definitely left with a big question mark, but overall this was just, it was really good. I am always a bit hesitant when I go into YA books in general, because I'm not really sure if I'm going to vibe with the kind of teen angst, the language, like the slang being used. I think it's very quick for it to age, just because we see new, like, linguistic changes especially in like teens like YA area like very quickly so I wasn't really sure how I'd feel when you know characters said like X is fire <laughs> and like you know started using slang that I'm like I don't use that and I feel like in five years time in less than that we're, we're all not going to be using that but um I was really captivated there's so many important issues being discussed we are getting through grief we are getting through what it means to be fearful the healthy kind of fear but also allowing our release of fear to have us expect bigger things to have courage and expect you know wrongs to be righted so i i just i really felt for cade i felt for his family um i did tear up when he had a certain heart-to-heart -heart moment with his father. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really impressed. My first experience with Lamar Giles, and I really, really liked it. This is definitely gonna get high marks, and I, I can't wait to recommend this to other people because it, it just, it feels very important. So that means I was able to complete a prompt for St. Treme's graveyard, as well as Joe's library, because this was written by a black man, and it was a book with deals, um, yeah highly recommended if, if you're looking for those prompts for black a -ween. And uh, now it's time to uh, reassess this challenge. Uh, let's do a check-in. How many pages did I read? Well, um, this book is 354 pages. I did the math. 423 minus 354 is 68. Oh no, I did. I typed it wrong. <laughs> Hold on. 
Okay, I redid it. 423 minus 354 is 69. I was like, that doesn't make any sense. 68. I looked at the calculator on my screen and yeah, I, I had typed the wrong number. So that means I have 69 pages to read tonight. It is just under 1030 p.m. I think I can do it. I would like to do it so that tomorrow morning it's a fresh slate and I just have the pages given to me by uh, another booktuber that I won't reveal until tomorrow morning. Tomorrow is Kirsten from the Reading Them for Relax and Readathon. If I'm absolutely exhausted, then I'll just tack the pages I don't finish onto tomorrow's pages. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll see how much I get read before I decide that sleep is necessary and something that's a good idea. So, okay, sounds good. Uh, thank you again to Brie. Thank you for hosting Blackoween and uh, just putting so much effort into that readathon. Um, and it's, it really is the main reason why I decided to pick up Ruin Road. So yeah, thanks. Well, we have survived and we only have one day left. It is Saturday afternoon. I've already had a really busy day. And so I am ready to just tuck into some books, read for the rest of the evening. And the booktuber who I am going to be highlighting today has made sure that I can accomplish that. So let me backtrack. Last night, I did end up staying up way too late knowing that I had a library shift this morning until three o'clock. But you know what? We, we persevered. It was fine. I had caffeine. And now I've switched to decaf because I, I need to unwind. I didn't end up finishing all of the pages I needed to read last night to catch up to not only Jess's deficit 90 pages, but then the 333 given to me from Brie. So I knew that this morning I was gonna have to play catch up, but I was so tired. I had to prioritize my Sunday video because I wanted to give the manor early access for my witnesses and my sleuths. And it was a pretty big video that I wanted to make sure nothing was out of place. I didn't misspeak to the point where I might want to re record that section because it was my predictions for the 2024 mystery thriller category uh, for Goodreads Choice Awards. I have never done that before. So I really wanted to make sure that I felt comfortable, you know, putting it out in the world. And we'll see, maybe I'll, I'll do a reaction video I was thinking that what could be really fun is actually doing a video where I declare my top 20 picks like you know instead of Goodreads Choice Awards long list Leandra Choice Awards long list especially because I want to be able to highlight all of the lovely 2024 mysteries that I read that I just I just don't see them getting the recognition that they deserve on the mystery thriller category you know you can have your own opinions about it, but I do think that mystery gets shafted sometimes. So I want to make sure that that was right. I ended up going to bed probably around like 1.32 a.m. I know. I woke up at 7 a.m. to get ready for the library. So that's why it's actually perfect that I'm highlighting Kirsten from The Reading Nymph today because I'll be participating in her readathon, which is the Relax and Readathon. It's a 24-hour readathon. I can't remember if she does it monthly or bi-monthly because this is my first time I've actually been able to participate, so I'm very excited. Uh, so it's just, it's perfect that she's providing us with cozy activities, cozy goals, while also having some really easy to achieve reading goals. And you know what? While she's allowing me to relax and read and fulfill a few prompts today, uh, she hasn't allowed me to relax on the page count because she ended up giving me 376 pages to read today. Obviously, she didn't realize what she was giving me when she gave me that number, but at that point, you might as well give me 400. And what's so funny about this challenge is these booktubers are making me read. That is for sure. In the last three days of this challenge, I have read about a thousand pages. What? I'm going to have to calculate, add all the pages up together because this has been a really big reading week for me. And I will see if I end up feeling a bit of burnout, but I'm not mad at any of the books I'm reading. It just has been, you know, a stressful week because I want to be able to, of course, achieve my goal, read all the pages given to me by uh, various lovely booktubers. But yeah, so thank you so much, Kirsten, uh, for allowing me to relax, to finish some books too. I didn't know if she was going to give me a low number, I may have had to end the day, end of the week with no books finished, which kind of would have been sad. So what I can say is, thanks to Kirsten, I will be finishing Bright Storm, and that's going to be for the VHS tape. Uh, it'll also be for my final encounter in Act 2 for Fablin. Perfect. 
I also am going to be able to count it for the bingo board way back for Scarathon because I'm counting this one as like a book I would get out of a slump for. Awesome. And I'm not really sure how many more pages I have left, but I know I will have quite a few pages to read anyway. And you know what's so funny about this is the last day on Saturday, this is the day I realized, hey, you could have been reading manga. Leandra, I'm gonna kill you. Oh my gosh, what am I gonna do with you? It's fine. You know, I still love myself. But I'm gonna be reading Cat on the Hero's Lap, volume five for this, volume three for this. <laughs> Can you tell that I am just like at my wit's end at this point? I need the week to end and I'm ready to relax into Sunday for sure. Uh, but I am gonna read this and it was really serendipitous that I'm able to read it because obviously I remembered to go back to my spinner wheel to see what I could pick up and what I could read for a relaxing readathon. And before that I had to take off a few prompts. So I ended up taking off the cat in the book for Blameless, finished that a few days ago. I took off the VHS tape just because I've already assigned it to a book and I will be finishing Brightstorm today. And then I had to assign a prompt to Ruin Road because I just was so excited to read that for Black Aween that I didn't even consider that it needed to have a prompt associated with it. I can't remember what I chose for it to be honest. I was either between like a paranormal read because there are quite a few of those prompts on there or I might have just went with the attic prompt and then I spun the wheel uh, right after doing that and I I literally I, I can't make this up I ended up getting cat on the cover for the trick-or-treat TBR and I was like oh my gosh I can read manga and it's in the the perfect spirit of Relax and Readathon because Kirsten's going to be hoping to read some manga in the next 24 hours so I'm going to join her in that. I'm going to continue reading a book, finishing it, which is excellent and uh, we'll, we'll see if after I read these two books what number of pages I have to read and uh, what book I'm going to start at least to close this vlog out. But Yes, I'm very excited to relax. I, as I said, I've got my, my decaf coffee. I plan to do a little bit of creative stuff, working on my bullet journal, updating my bullet journal. I have some, uh, what is it? It's like non-alcohol sparkling wine. So I might treat myself to that tonight just to have some, you know, of the bubbles and really lean into feeling as though I'm pampering myself uh, because I have a few things I want to do on Sunday. So I'm not really interested in drinking any kind of alcoholic drinks. I also made espresso martinis in the middle of the week, if you don't recall. So anyways, I'll probably enjoy some of that. And who knows, maybe I can cozy up uh, with a game like on the computer. I haven't played Sims in quite some time. That would be really fun. So I might do that. We'll see. But uh, yeah, let me stop talking and actually just uh, go read so that my next update isn't in the pitch dark. It probably will be. I'll probably see you tonight. Okay, bye. a little after 6 p.m. just want to confirm I finished Bright Storm and there were 328 pages in this book. I started today at 138 at least for today's pages so that means I read 190. I did the math 376 minus 190 is 186. I have since started cat on the hero's lap there are like 139 pages in this so i just providing some mathematical confirmation that when i finish this i've got 47 pages to do with what i will i'm not sure what i'm going to pick up when i finish this but i will say this is the ultimate cozy evening bright storm was such a lovely return i really enjoyed being with these characters again, seeing their beginning, knowing where they're going to go in the series in say like 
book two with Dark Whispers, the second book, I mean the third book, Fire Song. It was really great to be back with Arthur and Maudie. And of course, now I'm back with another crew, uh, the hero, his gang on their campaign to fight off the, the Demon King, and also all these little cats that are causing some mayhem, but also saving the heroes at some points in addition to, you know, being on their lap and making them give them all the snuggles and everything. So it feels really great to be back in the third volume of this. And uh, yeah, we'll see what kind of cozy read I decide to pick up for the last 47 pages of this challenge. So I'm going to get back to this, but um, I will see you guys soon-ish, like once I, you know, finish those pesky 47 pages. It is 1130 at night and I didn't think I would do it, but I have successfully completed the challenge of reading as many pages as been allotted to me for seven days. And uh, I read a lot of books. I read a lot of pages. I ended up finishing Brightstorm today. I finished uh, Cat on the Hero's Lap. I had 47 pages and I honestly, about maybe a couple hours ago, said, you know what, Leandra, you're gonna have to record a clip tomorrow admitting that you failed, that you're just not gonna do it because I, I didn't think I would. Honestly, what derailed me was the fact that I had to hunt a ginormous wasp the size of my thumb all throughout my kitchen. It was a terrifying experience. I murdered the thing. Like, it was a murder. I used multiple weapons. It was a mess. We're gonna move past it. So I <laughs> was clearly traumatized and I was like, we're, we're just, we're not gonna do it. I'm really tired, I'm gonna go to bed. And then I was like, no, you know what, Leandra, you still have some things that you're gonna do, get ready do you have an audiobook that you haven't finished yet that you are really close to finishing? And I ended up remembering that I had about 20% of the imposition of unnecessary obstacles left to read. This is by Malka Alder. It's the second book in the, well, it's the second book to the Mimicking of Known Successes. I don't know what the series is called. Oh, I think it's Masa and Plady which is a sapphic version of Sherlock and Watson set on Jupiter. And it's a like a sci-fi Sherlockian mystery novella series that also has romance. It's just, it's a lot. And I feel as though I want to read it physically. I felt that way for the first book and I still feel that way. But Anyways, I ended up having 20% left. I listened to it uh, and I made sure to calculate. I didn't have a physical copy, so I don't know how many pages it was, but you know what? Math is going to help us. So what did I do? I had a hundred. No, I had a... I had an hour and seven minutes left to listen. I proceeded to do that. The book is 208 pages. I decided to divide 208 by five because the audiobook is five hours. Like literally it's like four hours and like 58 minutes or something like that. So I decided to try to find out what 20% of 208 was. And that ended up being 42, 42. It was like 41.6, but we're gonna go with 42. I then multiplied that by seven because I had seven minutes. Oh, I think I divided it wrong. I was supposed to do seven divided by 60 and I ended up doing, wait, I was supposed to multiply 42 by seven and then divide it by 60, but I ended up dividing it by 100. I need to do the math, one second. I did the math wrong, it's fine. Basically, what I ended up doing is reading an extra two pages, but like all of these conversions, I probably didn't do it right anyway, but if I were to divide it by 60, that means seven minutes worth is five pages. And so what we just literally all I had to do was finish the audiobook, which I do, but that was dumb. And I did it wrong as I was trying to percentage, like 100, or naturally trying to figure out by 60 minutes an hour. I ended up reading um, 45. I thought I read 45 pages of imposition of unnecessary obstacles. So that means I thought I needed to read two pages. So I read the first two pages of Displeasure Island by Alice Bell. This is the sequel to Grave Expectations, a book that I recently gave five stars and really, really enjoyed. So in the end, I did fail, didn't I? Because instead of 376 pages, according to my math, 
I read 378. So Kirsten, this is my public apology. I'm so sorry. I failed you. I failed all the other booktubers who helped me out throughout the week. Um, but anyways, thank you so much to those who did provide me pages. Don't forget to check them all out below. We had Sarah from Wicked Reading, Margaret from The Word Nerd. I had Katie from Books and Things, Kelsey from Slime and Slashers, Jess, this Kiwi, Brie, the Locked Booktician, and finally Kirsten, the Reading Nymph. And the pages were as follows. We had 222, then we got 106, then 172, then 113, 300, 333, and 376. So the number of pages that these seven booktubers made me read this week was 1622. But honestly, at this point, don't trust my math because I can't trust my math. I've lost faith in myself. I've lost trust in myself <laughs> this week. Um, and I've lost a little bit of my sanity. But what I ended up reading was 1624. Oh my gosh, honestly, I read so many books this week. Uh, it's really lovely to feel as though I'm finally catching up on all of the titles I really wanted to read. So I'm, I'm really glad I did the challenge. But would I ever recommend someone do this? No, <laughs> I really wouldn't. I would not recommend anyone do this challenge after what I've been through this week, especially just because there just wasn't a reprieve. There were so many pages I had to read. I did to myself, but it's fine. Uh, would I do it again? Yeah, <laughs> I would probably do it again. Please please check out these seven creators that I've highlighted this week. They have put so much effort, so much love into this community by creating the readathons that they've created. Uh, whether it was the 24 hour readathon by Kirsten, a week long readathon, a month long readathon, a year long readathon, it doesn't really matter. Um, or however much you want to participate in them, but just go give them some love show some appreciation, um, give them a follow for me because they really are lovely and they were so, so nice to respond to my very random question and just accept whatever would be, would be. Thanks as always to this booktube community and thank you to my guest at the manor. I hope you've been enjoying your stay as much as I've enjoyed hosting you. And also if you ended up missing last week's vlog and you enjoyed this one, you might as well go over there, check it out, see what I got up to last week. Anyways, thanks everyone. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>